Janet, welcome to the Astro Ben podcast. How are you? I am doing very well. Thank you so much for having me, Ben. Ah, oh, no worries at all. So where are you? I, I assume you're on planet Earth physically, but behind you, you've got a very cool <laughs> background. Where is that? <laughs> I like to tell I people like to that tell people I just that reside I just on reside Janet's, on Janet's planet, planet, and that is wherever I happen to be. Right now, however, right now, I do however, get I asked do get this asked a lot when I'm Zooming when I'm with students, with students, students to like, they're like, space, and I'll go, <laughs> oh, oh, I wish I were, oh, this is just a little curtain I got on Amazon, so I I am right now, am right in, right Nashville, now in Nashville, Tennessee. Tennessee. Amazing. So what, what is Janet's planet? And I'm intrigued. Was it, was it just a case of it rhymes or how did you, how did you come up with that brand? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So All right, yes, so yes, was I was very I much very influenced much by Schoolhouse, Schoolhouse Rock, 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 Rock and Rock and Interplanet and Janet, she's the galaxy girl, girl travels, around, travels around in her future world. world. Yes. Yes. Everybody, yes. Always, Everybody called always called me Interplanet Janet, but it was really, really, it was a couple of things. I always like to give a shout out to my fifth grade teacher, Mr. Ernestine Cabro Jones, who was in her second year of teaching. I was 10 years old and she was the most profound voice that still lingers in my head about girls can do science. It, it isn't just for, isn't the, boys. Just for the boys, and she and just, she, just she, loved she loved so big, so big. and she was and that she was hard, hard line, line. You knew where the boundary, knew where the boundary was, was, and you knew to obey you, to obey you to shush. shush. And she said shush, <laughs> but, she but she pushed you to pushed excellence. You to excellence. And so she, so really, she really is the is reason I love stars and planets. She and another teacher named Miss Carolyn Davis. They were all in their bell bottoms in 1978, out on a Friday night in Covington, Tennessee, rural little town, home of Isaac Hayes and the charms blow pop. Blow pop. And, so, and so nothing so much else nothing there, much else but, there. They but they put their telescopes on the playground. On the playground. Now, mind you, now, there mind still you, wasn't that much light pollution because I'm from the country. The country. And I looked at these two ladies and they're pointing out like, oh, there's the seven sisters. And this. I was wowed. I'm like, I want to be like these women. And then that same year, she assigned me the planet Saturn to give a solar system report on Thus, my, Thus logo my logo looks, looks like, Saturn. like Saturn. I have, I, have, I, have, I can trace, I can it, trace all it all to back to fifth grade and Miss Ernestine. But but fast forward, fast forward I, I, still I, still I still love art and science. And science. I, love I love to perform. I like my band. I like my saxophone. I like my piano. I like the stage. And so I was like, what do I do? What do I do? So my bachelor's so degree is in music and theater, music and theater which usually which people scratching their, scratching their heads, heads and going, what is you? What is you? What you? And how did you get how here? You get here? When I, I graduated, graduated college, college, I got a job at a theme job park, job park, and, and funny, enough, funny enough, I walked in, I walked in and my and little, my little uh, co uh, performers were all, were all eight, eight to twelve, eight to 12 years, old. years old, and I walked, and I walked in, in to what was, to what was my purpose. I didn't know it at the time. I thought, oh, this is cool and groovy. I got a little summer job working at the theme park, and I had that job for five years called the Opry Lane Kids Club. I have pictures, I have pictures like, like I have grown, I have grown kids, kids now come up, now, to, me come go, up to me and go, I have a picture, I have a picture of sitting in your lap your when you worked at Opryland. Land. Oh, wow. uh, it also sometimes <laughs> gets me a free <laughs> coffee going coffee through Starbucks. Going through Starbucks. But, but out of that experience, that experience I thought, I still want to do stuff do with stuff kids. I looked around. Bill Nye the Science Guy is like the only guy kind of doing science. There was Beatman's World in the late 90s. But there weren't any females. Where are the girls? Where are the girls? Hero scientists. I'll plant my flag there. And so that's where it began. I like to tell people Janet's Planet's a bit of a galaxy of things. I've been on public television here in the United States. I'm on Highbrow high in, in the UK. It's an educational, uh, educational kind of streaming, uh, kind of streaming. Kid, con kid, con kid content, kid content aggregation, aggregation site. site. There's Battery Pop, battery there's pop, Minnow, there's, Minnow. Uh, there's uh, YouTube, there's all, YouTube these things. all these things. But, but it's, it's, it's Space it's Camp, space it's, it's online, online classes. classes, it's the JP Astrocast. Astro so, so, yeah, I really yeah, am. I really maybe, am. The, maybe the, the grown-up, grown uh, uh, real-life, real not animated not version of Interplanet Janet, just a galaxy of things. <laughs> Fascinating. I, I can feel the energy just like reminating from you and like popping through the screen. That's so awesome. Have you have you always had that energy level or or have you sort of did you make the conscious effort or is it just comes naturally to you? You're just excited. I'm just excited. I'm just excited. It's <laughs> like I think I think <laughs> I think for I my think very for my introverted, very introverted mom, mom, and my and my, my dad was my dad always, was pretty, always gregarious pretty gregarious. And when, and when, we're, whenever, whenever we're around, we're people around, go, people go, 
I can tell who you come from. from. But I think think, uh, the story uh, goes as I was three three weeks weeks premature. premature, And it's like, this is back in the 60s, 60s, right? When they were giving giving women stuff to not, not, like, stop the labor. labor. And And, uh, uh, finally, my grandma grandma comes comes in, and my mom's not doing so well. And she's like, hey, this baby's coming out. They couldn't find a fetal heartbeat. So was anybody's guess? I was just rusting up, man. I was like, so get all that out, all that up. So I can spend all the energy, all the energy here, here but I think part, I think of, it, part of it part of it's always of it's been always here been and here a little bit of goofball and, goofball. and I think and at some point you just have to embrace that nerdy goofy, goofy side, side of yourself and go yep, yep super, super me super I've had more than a few people in the very serious space industry people go are you always like this and I'm like I'm like <laughs> and then walk, and then walk away, away going, going, probably not my probably peeps, not my but, peeps. but um, uh, I think it I think also it comes also from working, working with, with kids. kids, and I'm a natural yeah. performer, performer, right? It's like, right? as I've worked like on my yeah. master's, master's degree in, 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 STEM in STEM education and science and, science and all that and sort of all thing, sort of thing. Uh, uh, but, I, but I think about it like this, it's sort of that physics principle, right? Energy is never destroyed, it's only transferred. And And the best best example of that, that, and I don't know how much you guys watch Mr. Rogers Rogers in the UK, but but he again is another hero, and he, he... Tells this tells story, this story in, his in his memoir that he that he, w- he and a friend went to friend hear this guy because this guy, he was in because seminary because before, he was, before he was a children's star, star uh, a PBS, uh, a PBS, and. and um, um, they get there, they get and the there, person they're person gone to hear, gone to Henry, Henry Nowen, has, has been delayed. He's not going to make it. So a lay so person comes up comes to give the, 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 the speech, the sermon. The sermon. And, and all the way through, the way he's, through like, oh, he's like, oh, he didn't hit that. He didn't hit that. And he's, critiquing, he's critiquing, and that's, that's not the right not kind of homily. And these sorts of things. Well, at the end of the sermon, he turns to his friend, really ready to critique this gentleman who's just spoken. But his friend turns to him with tears streaming down his face. It's like, oh, Fred, wasn't that exactly what we needed to hear today? And he he says in his memoir memoir that it's like at that moment moment he realized realized there is a space between between the speaker speaker and the hearer that somehow gets translated in that kind of wonderful way and that if your intention intention is pure pure, the message will get to the one one that really really it is intended to get to to. and he had had many many, uh an account of how that would happen a mom would write in thank you for saying xyz he'd go back to his scripts nowhere in his scripts did did he say he what, say she, what said she said that he said, said, he said but, somehow but somehow they heard they what, what was most needed was that day. So I keep so that I in keep the back of my back mind as well. I'm going, going, you know, somebody, somebody out there just there needs just a little, needs like, a little like, like, it's okay to be okay you. To be it's okay, okay to be perky and silly and goofy and love your science and dance and sing it along of whatever you need to do. Absolutely. I mean, I think most kids are sort of fascinated by space. Where, oh, where yeah. do you think where do you think the drop off is? Because you, your your demographic seems to be the kind of preteen audience. Like, would you say that's the point where a lot of people kind of get, you know, they start thinking about other things. They start adolescence and they start to, you know, stop looking up at the stars and start looking at their phones, that kind of thing. Do you, do you think that's the, the sort of tipping point for a lot I- of people? For a lot of people, and I think here's how it breaks down, or this is at least least my personal kind of thesis. thesis. When you, you, any kid, 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 like I, I, talk, I'm talking like like preschool to sixth, seventh grade, grade. you mentioned space, space. let's build a lunar lander. lander. Oh, I've got one right here here that we just did online the other day. I mean, we're talking paper plates and straws and cups and stuff that I even got a flap that, you know, they can come down. So it's like, but again, I'm just using stuff that I found in the kitchen, right? I can get kids to open up because I like to think about space being kind of that gateway to science, right? Right. It's sort of like, like, oh, I am part of the great unknown. unknown. I'm a thermodynamic thermodynamic miracle. miracle. Uh, You know, the same elements that exist in stars stars exist in me. I'm related to the earth, earth, you know, chemically, to each other biologically, to the universe Mm. atomically. Mm. Woohoo! You know, I'm getting excited excited about what I am. am. And And so that, it's like that's easy to express to a kid. And then who doesn't want to have their own spaceship and play astronaut and all of those things? So the younger you can get a kid, 
kid kind of following, following their own, own natural, natural scientist, scientist anyway. anyway. It's just, yeah. again, we tend, like it's Carl Sagan like said, it's like we tend to beat it out of them or suppress that by hearing the tests and we've got a mandate and this is the exit ticket and blah, blah, blah. I think the problem still is, and I don't know if it's universal or maybe it's just here in the U.S., I think there comes a moment in time when a kid is trying to figure out where they fit in. Yeah, and whether and that's, whether a, female that's a, female a female or a male, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, grade is hard, is hard because, because you still like some of the things you liked when you, you were younger, younger, and you're trying to you're figure trying out who you're out going to be like as you age. age. If you don't if have you don't a good have mentor, a good mentor, mentor that, happens that happens along or that sticks, or that sticks with you through, through middle, middle school, school, I think that drop-off age can be can be drastic. And I think that's sometimes why we see such a decline in science or pursuing of that. And that is why that I'm is why always I'm saying always to saying all of the space, all of the space uh, experts that I speak to, that I speak who are you mentoring? You, mentoring? you have you to be have actively, to be actively willing, to willing to speak to, to kids. Speak to kids. Ben, this was, ben, the, this happy was the happy accident that happened, that happened in the pandemic, in the pandemic. March, March 2020. 2020. I start to see start to every see performing, performing art center, art center job, job I have on I the have calendar. Like 2020 was destined to be, was going to be was my be best year of touring, touring, doing camps, and, camps, and all of it went away. It went away. Mm. It was just a vacuum. Just a vac- and I'm sitting, and I'm sitting, one, sitting day, one day, it was March 16th, because I had the first, had first recording of the day I did it, which was March 17th. But Monday, but March 16th, I'm sitting in my you know kitchen table crying in my coffee going, what the heck? And... I had this prompt prompt in the way that that, whatever you want to call it, spirit, spirit, whatever, whatever. like, (laughs) you need to be with kids. You You need to cheer up. up. You need to go find some kids. So So I'm so dumb and naive. naive. I was like, like, hey, here's here's my my Zoom Zoom info info. before I knew there were dumb people out there that would Zoom bomb you. Come join me and talk about the solar system. I had 26 26 kids kids on March 17, 2020. 2020. March 18, 18, I had 76. 76. And then word spread. Hey, I'm not doing anything. anything. You want me to come talk to those kids you're talking to? Sure. Sure. I had astronauts. I had 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 Wally Font Font of Mercury 13 13. come and talk to a, like, as full to capacity Zoom room that I could have talking about her experience to become, you know, you know. An astronaut. an astronaut. So it was, so it was but, to but to watch the kids, watch here's the, the, most, kids, profound here's the most profound thing. thing. To watch to the watch students the who join have no barrier, have no not, barrier. A webinar, not a webinar, but we're in the same in room. The same I'm going, all right, all Abby, right, all right, Evie, all, right, all right, Lucas. All right, Lucas. Lucas was hilarious. Lucas was He's a little kid, little about eight years old with 140 IQ. IQ. He lives in New Jersey, so it didn't matter so it what matter expert what we had. Expert we I just want to ask, ask you, first of all, have you ever been to New Jersey? And then he would come out with some amazing question. Like one day we had Dr. Ken Carpenter with Hubble, and so he asked Dr. Ken if he's ever been to New Jersey and his precious little accent and speech impediment. And uh, then he goes, uh, then he goes, so did you ever find it disappointing that, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, about the work on the Hubble? I mean, it was like, I mean, it was like out of the blue. Out I mean, such a smart question. And to watch and Dr. Watch Ken Dr. Carpenter Ken say to, say and to, Lucas would have been would have barely been seven, seven at this point, at this point and, say, and say, you know, that is know such that is a such genius question. question. And mm. so many and so experts many would experts say that. Would say and that, that is where I go. We've got to get more in that realm of letting kids talk to the actual people doing it. Then there's, all of a sudden there's possibility and probability, not just conjecture and hypothesis that this could be a for real thing but it's going to take all of us because in the next 20 to 30 years years, we're going to become the space the space industry industry is going to be a trillion dollar business business. so so what is your place in it kiddos kiddos? uh line Uh, up up. i mean we're not talking billionaires billionaires billionaires. that's weird and a weird number but um it's going to take plumbers and welders and astronauts and musicians and all the things that we need on earth we're going to need in space so i'm I'm pushing, I'm pushing here in the U.S. In the US. I've been saying this, been a, long saying this a long time. I like to think I'm like a futurist whose ideas just they, just the people they, haven't caught up. But I think space <laughs> education <laughs> needs to be needs part to be of uh, countries' country curriculum and overall and curriculum. Overall curriculum. Otherwise, 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 we're going to, we're going lose, to out lose out to superpowers, superpowers who are pushing are that. Pushing that. I, I agree. I've had uh, I've had a few people on the podcast that have s- sort of s- said the same. Um, I mean, you've been you've been doing this a long time. I, I think you started Janet's Planet in 2014. Is that correct? 
No, no, no. It's like I started doing Janet's Planet. It's like actually established it in 1996. And it's like, again, I... Nobody's ever going to ask me for the business plan plan because it's a little bit up the hill, around around the bush, bush, you know, pushing the rock up again and figuring it out. out. But I started on public television television, just producing like little little short interstitials interstitials in between programming. Uh, So it's Uh, so so it was really for a long long time time, just 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 broadcast. broadcast. It wasn't interacting. And then people started going, "Hey, would you come to my school? Would you talk about this?" And so it sort of sort of. Began this, began this escalation in 2011, 2011 I was approached, I was approached and they approached said, hey, if you can add some bells and whistles bells to the school to the show, we can put you into performing arts centers, centers which, now which now I've been doing, been doing for over 10 years, years, and it's such a gift such to a be able to travel, travel all over the country and do that. Uh, so uh, so it, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Here at the Here kind at of 30-year 30 30 year mark, mark of working, of working with kids, kids because I started the job at Opryland in 1992, I can instantly kind of assess a kid, if you will. Like, I can usually, it's like, even if a parent doesn't tell me, it's like, I will try to do my best to tune into who that kid is. Ooh, this one's going to need a little bit more encouragement. Oh, I see you somewhere on the spectrum there. Love it. I'm one of you. Yes, we're going to get along fine. ADD, ADHD, anxiety disorder. It was interesting. Between the fall of 2020 and uh, summer of 2021, I was underneath a NASA Next Gen STEM grant, a gift, a gift, a gift. I was so grateful to have. We Zoomed with over 8,500 8, kids, had a quarter million views of the content that we produced, and 65% of the kids that joined most often online um, happened to be a kid that had some special, awesome learning difference or learning superpower, as I like to call it. And I was like, all right, I found my peeps. Because I I get that. It's like, you know, we're energetic. we got to move around. It's like, that's why I'm not sitting while we're doing this, because I'd be probably kicking my standing desk or something. So it's like, I understand those kinds of brilliant and wonderful kiddos and like encouraging them, because I see myself there. But... Um, yeah, I yeah. don't even remember your question now. I've danced at no, the I was, no. Mulberry Bush. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. And I suppose that's what's um, I, I sort of looking on your website and how you, in, you encourage children uh, to be active learners as opposed to passive. And I, I sort of see the, see the difference there. I mean, you know, it's great you work with, you know, such a diverse range of, of, of kids. How does your approach change to... Uh, to different genders like do you have a we well, you, you say you kind of you know you sort of find what's special about people on an individual level but if you're talking to uh you know a, a group of a group of girls for instance you know do you have a slightly different strategy to uh to, to gain them to join the dots and, and and feel the excitement or is it you just kind of read the room or read the you know the audience I think even I before think I before read the I room, read the there, room there, there's been something I've been something saying, I've been a, long saying a long time. It's like love it's like first love and first teach second. Teach second. The minute oh, yeah. that a kid the knows kid that you that are, you for, are them, for them, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if, if I were I polka were dotted, dotted or, or you know an you know, alien. They're like, oh, They're like, oh this oh, thing called this Janet, thing called Janet like, like apparently likes me and is for me. The other thing the I, other noticed, thing I noticed, noticed, and it's, I, I've, I've always known, known this, this, but I particularly, particularly saw it during the pandemic, during pandemic and doing lots of virtual stuff, stuff. And, especially and especially for kids, for kids who, joined who joined every day. Every day. Every and, day. Then and then I had kids joining not only at the 10 a.m., coming back at 4 p.m., and I'm like, you're going to hear the same stuff, but you're welcome to come. And I thought this is this has become a safe space. And, and, but sometimes, but sometimes I would have I would like have what I would consider a genius lesson plan. <laughs> and then a kid and would go, Hey, Miss Janet, Janet, Miss Janet. And I think Janet, they're going to ask me a question. like, yeah, do you want to see my, you want to see my snake, Toby? Toby? Well, sure. Well, sure. <laughs> Let's see that Let's snake, see that Toby. Snake, Toby. <laughs> and then, and then, then that would then lead that into would Maggie talking about, and Maggie is superbly smart superbly and knows all and kinds all of stuff, about, stuff snakes. about snakes. And then and that would lead somebody, somebody else to say, hey, Miss Janet, Janet, I just Janet, made this thing out of... And, uh, and uh, Sabrina, Sabrina loved to show loved me to show that me she could crochet, she crochet. One, day, one day instead of instead teaching, of teaching like, anything like anything science, uh, she uh, said, can she I said, teach can everybody how to crochet? Okay, okay. 
We might on we a might long on trip a to Mars trip to need Mars to know how to crochet. So let's crochet. So let's crochet. So let's crochet. And that, and for that me, for is what I is think, what being, I being an informal, informal educator, educator, the gift that I have, I bow before I bow teachers before who are doing it every day, every year day, after year, year because, because you're the heroes. heroes. And, I and I know that, that based that on what you are what required, you are required to, report to report and the right. testing you've got to do, a lot of times you don't have time, time, time to do, do that, that in your classroom. Because how many times, I mean, I saw a great meme the other day, a kid will raise their hand and you will think they're going to ask you because you've been such a brilliant teacher and they're like, no, I just want to let you know that it's my dad's birthday today. Well, happy birthday to your dad. And what's your dad's name? But here was the funny thing. The minute that I would ask about Toby, or I would say, hey, Evie, have you been out rock hunting? Or Rylan, have you been out riding that horse? I saw that post. Look at you. As soon as they felt known, I could ask them to do any assignment or I could ask them to, hey, would you guys like to find out more about this? What are, you, what are your thoughts on this? Maybe we should ask. Maybe we should write NASA. I don't know. I mean, Lucas was convinced that it didn't need to be named the James Webb Telescope, but it should, would have been better named the Beginning of Time Telescope, the BOTT, B-O-T-T, since NASA loves acronyms. So we wrote to NASA. NASA said James idea. Webb had, I mean, James <laughs> Webb had done a lot <laughs> to make sure that science was science always a was part always of the NASA, NASA mission. mission. And granted, and it's granted, like, it's let's like, honor, let's what, honor he did what he did and everything. And everything. But I was but like, I'm going like, to honor, honor this eight-year-old with 140 IQ, IQ. that beginning that a time telescope and called the bot. I'm going to call it the bot for the rest of my days. That's so awesome. I wish I had you as a teacher. Do you have kids yourself? So here's funny, here's funny. Like I, like, you know, in a few know, moments, a few I'm, moments going I'm going to go to, go to um, uh, an, elementary an elementary school, Jack school, Anderson, Anderson, right around the right corner. Around the corner. It's, a it's a Title I one school one here school in here uh, my, uh, my, right in my own backyard. My backyard. And, I and I started it, started during, it the during the pandemic. pandemic. They were still, they going, were still going in school, in school wearing, masks, wearing masks, and so uh. they, they didn't they have... Didn't have Science curriculum Science or their, curriculum uh, their, uh, or their project, based their project based learning, based learning uh, kind, of kind of curriculum, curriculum planned out and they asked me to come and do that. Well, yeah. well it's like that it's program like that has program grown. So I had about 125 kids in 2020 and 21, and now, now we've got almost 200. So, so um, I'm, still going, I'm still, going still going and volunteering my time. I figured, I figured that, it's that it's like, that's the thing that I would say to anybody. It's like, I can't be asking people to mentor and then me not giving away some of my time. So, so I've been going a couple of times a week to their school, and it's it's just rewarding. I don't have a degree in teaching. I am currently working so close to getting my master's in STEM education. What happens is I'll finish a couple of you know hours, and then whoops, I got to go work and pay the bills. I'll get it finished one of these days. Uh, but I've never taught in a classroom. Like I said, I did try it once for two weeks. And we were doing we're some, doing oh, some, we were doing oh, de we're doing decomposers, decomposers, and it was the recycling process. process. So I bring so in I this bring big mound of dirt, and kids, and kids that are living in the city and never even, like, they're like, ah! And I'm like, come on, let's look at roly polies. And they loved they it. They loved it. Then I was told, I was by, told the by the vice principal vice that I wasn't getting to the exit ticket, and we had to think about testing that I went, yeah, it's not for me. I couldn't do it. I, I mean, do it. just I mean, because, because I thought, because I thought but, they're but they're engaged in their understanding, and they're understanding this possible, you know, possibility of decomposition and how this gets recycled. And, and, mm. and so that, and so that, that, that to me, that to me again, again, I know that they have, that to, be they have to be a system and checks and balances. And checks and balances. If I, if I ruled the world, world I, would I would do away with a lot of the standardized, standardized testing, testing and go, hey, kid, what hey are you really interested really in? Interested. Let's do it like Let's Elon like Musk Elon at Astro, Astro School. School. Let's start teaching, start you, about teaching you about the industry in third grade. grade. What are you gifted at? Now, a lot of people don't like that attitude either because they consider it like, oh, let we're putting people in tracks. But I think we let our kids play. And in the middle of their play, they may find their passion. And if in the middle of their passion, they may find their purpose, as Tony Wagner of Harvard says, in creating the innovators that will change the world. And so it's like that's in that kind of free form Montessori way that you sort of learn whatever sparks your curiosity or you allow, you open the door and go, hey, which door would you like to open? And then you let that child choose. 
the power of choice power for a choice kid is powerful. Kid is powerful. The power, the power of, of I love you, I, love I see you, I, I think you're magnificent. What can I do to encourage you more? And I'm sorry that uh, your iguana didn't make it. Those kinds of equations and conversations are important, and you can't you can't always be handing down the knowledge. You yeah, gotta make it yeah. relational, and maybe that's the real, the real thing. Is yeah, relational. I think you're absolutely right. I suppose we spend all the time trying to teach kids how to be adults when actually we should just be encouraging them to be kids. Um, because what, what like, like, who wants to like, like, be like, an adult? Is, adult is just not as fun as fun as, as you know, tax returns and. <laughs> Too many words, too many words like, like that. I yeah. fear is like because in the middle of the play. So I had, so I had I've got four I've got step four grandbabies. Step I, was I was never able to have able kids of my kids own. So maybe own. that's so one that thing that fuels my fire. My fire. Uh, I just uh, will. Just hey, will, you walk hey, across my path. I'll just go. Hey, you look cool. Let me. Let me. You need. What do you need? But I've been blessed to have three amazing stepsons, two daughter-in-laws, and four amazing grandbabies. And so on Sunday. Uh, their, dads their dads and my and husband my were husband visiting were with some other, with friends. Some other friends. And so and they're so like, Jay, like, what, what can we build? Because, and because one of my one grandkids, grandkids really, really loves the fact that I got a, you know, a glue gun. And so, and so I was so like, I don't know. So I broke out a, a, a thing of thing cotton of balls, balls and straws and string and paper plates. And yeah, they just played. And they were like, they were asking me, they were putting cotton balls in little cups and coloring it and asking me if I wanted a snow cone, snow cone and, and then they were they having were a snowball fight snowball with cotton, fight balls. cotton balls it didn't matter, it didn't the, matter. The, the downstairs, downstairs was right but sometimes, but sometimes it's like it's like I think you've I think got to let, let them play and you got to let them go and what else do you think what story would you tell because how else do they figure out what their own narrative is I don't know. I don't know. I think I, think I actually I have actually had people have had when the kids are kids going crazy going and crazy making a mess make everywhere. It's like, how do you stand it? And I was like, it's, it's called, like, a it's called a broom. Like, like Southern <laughs> Living or some, or some architectural digest, digest is not coming over the, the house today. today. It's about play. It's about play. And, and I want to be remembered, remembered in their minds, especially my grandbabies. Can you believe Angie would let us do all of that? All of that? I, want I want them to them remember to that I let them, them be truly them. them. And the same thing for the students that I get to uh, mentor, uh, mentor and love on. on. It's like, yeah. you don't need to be anybody else anybody but you. Else but and you don't have you don't to do have it like anybody it. else has anybody ever done it. I just don't like the cookie cutter thing. I don't like it. I don't like it having to be a certain way. Yeah. It's such a breath of fresh air to speak to you. Um, I, I know you've got to rush off. You've got to get got some kids to go and inspire. But it's the sort of final final question. Um, what what are the chances of a, a kids going to space? Do, do you, obviously we had um, Oliver Damon on on Blue Origin, but do you think we'll ever see like a, a teenager or someone in space? And 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 psychologically and mentally, like would a child deal with that? Would that inspire all the kids to be like, I could be, that could be me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I will tell I will you tell that you a dear that friend a dear named friend Daniel, Daniel Fox has a brilliant, a brilliant idea, idea, and he's working with Jane Pointer's company, Space Perspectives. And his, his really, really big blue big sky blue goal, goal is to get is 10, 10 teenagers, teenagers and in that and kind, that of, kind commercial of commercial space flight space way. Flight and again, Space, space Perspectives space is like this humongous balloon. You take about two hours to hours ascend to the edge of space. space. You have two hours to sort of look around and then descend about two hours. I think it's like think any it's like kind of any representation. Kind of representation. The, minute the minute that we that see we the see first African American female take those steps on the steps moon, on we mm. open up open a new up door, door, right? As soon as, as, soon we, see as we see the first female take the first, take the first, first steps, steps on the steps moon or, on Mars, or Mars, we again we have again swung the door even the wider. wider. The moment, the moment I, think, I, think, I think kids would be the perfect people, especially in this commercial space flight thing, because I think that we would see and experience their joy so fully, a little bit like we saw William Shatner. I yeah. wept when he when got he out of that. He was he looking, was he was looking, looking to find his, his words, words about, about this about thing. This it was thing. so black. It was so black. And, and he was trying he was to trying put his words, his words together, together about, about that, that overview, overview effect. effect. 
And I've and heard people I've say, heard you know, say, you, you know, can experience, experience microgravity, microgravity on a zero G plane, plane. but it's like, if but you're it's like that high, high, take a look, take a look out, out and see what mm. astronauts, astronauts have astronauts talked about, about that. All they see all is they this see blue ball, ball with not a lot of boundaries, boundaries but just, just one and one. all of humanity and this sense and of belonging sense of and that we're grander we're together grander than together separated by, by all kinds of divisions. Uh, uh, I, 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 think I think we will we see, that. see that. I think, I think to, to, to actually go actually for go a long-term mission, long mission to the moon, to moon or, to or to Mars, they would they especially would have to be prepped be for that and ready. And ready. Um, uh, but I tell you that I think there's some kids right now who have dealt with the last two years of quarantine and isolation. They've had the best analog experience ever to be the first kids in space. He's probably going to be one of your students, maybe the maybe the guy of 140 IQ. I mean, he's got a good you base. You know what, Lucas, I mean, again, <laughs> Lucas, Andrew, Andrew Jesse, Jesse, Brian, Brian Sean, Sean, Abby, 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 Maggie, Abby Maggie, Maggie, Catherine, Catherine Sachita, Sachita Studi. Studi. I mean, it's I like mean, I'm leaving like up oh, oh, tons of kiddos tons out. Of kiddos I'm sorry, out. just, uh, ben, uh, does ben does not have time for me to name you all. Yeah, any of them, any of them would be amazing. And my hope is, what I told them is like, just by the time you get to Mars, figure out a way to bring a grandma with you. Because, uh, yeah, you're going to need a grandma on Mars. <laughs> Time for Mars Bar. <laughs> That's right. So come, come over to Jan Jan's, 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 Jan's house for some good Mars snacks. snacks. Yeah. <laughs> Janet, the last it's been thing a that I would pleasure. tell anybody listening, yeah. and thank you, Ben, for having me. I'm sorry I'm going to have to jump off here and go hopefully hear some inspiring stories about their lunar villages these kiddos have built. Um, uh, it's just that. It's just that even if it's even just, if it's one, just one, one, even if there's even like if some there's kid like some in your kid life in your or, or a nephew, nephew or, or your or own child or your next door next neighbor's, neighbor's kiddo, kiddo, go and go buy him something that's noble, noble about space, about or, space, or, space or, science, or science or a science or kit or decide, decide that you're going to give to one kid every month some, you know, engineering kind of kit. But, but. At least, At least find, a find a kid in your, in your sphere, sphere of influence sphere that you can that have some great impact. impact. I mean, I mean, I know, I know even at my even age, at my I age, love the I encouraging, encouraging word. word. Think about it. If you're a kid a living kid through the through last couple of years, couple of years even more even so more now so than now ever. Than it's like, look for that kid that might need just a little bit of extra something and be that person going, I see you doing amazing things. Yeah, tell me about that. Wow, really? Really? Oh, you got a pet iguana. Nice, okay. What's it today? Get to know them. I always think it's like, for us to really get engagement, we first have to create an experience. And once they have that experience, then we have that opportunity to have that relationship with them. And they're like, oh, this is good. I've had this amazing experience. I've now got relationship. And I think that's how we get long-term engagement in space and science. That's fantastic. What a great message to end the podcast. Thank you so much, Janet. Thank you. Thank you. Let your mind Let revolve, your mind around, revolve this around this thought. The universe is always expanding. expanding. Let your mind do the same. And that's the view from Janet's planet. Amen. Bye, sweetheart. Bye, sweetheart. I'm so sorry I'm so to sorry run. Gotta go. go.